Welcome back to the You Can Too podcast. I'm so excited to hop into this with a great friend of mine. We have Luke Anning on the show. Uh, just to give a really, really short, brief rundown of who Luke is. Luke is a badass confidence coach for business owners, for coaches, more importantly. He went from sleeping in his car to making multiple five-figure months. And he's at a point in his life where, it, it, from me seeing him from where he was to where he is today, I, I truly can't express how much I appreciate the changes that you've made in your life and other people's lives because it's, it gives so much inspiration. I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of value from this episode today. But for those who may not be aware of who you are, Luke, can you give us a brief overview? Yeah, I love it when people always ask me the the brief overview. And I think um, I've more transitioned into like badass mindset and business now. But the confidence, it, the confidence came through because uh, before I was a business coach, I was a confidence and mindset coach. And before that, I was a fitness and mindset coach, kind of quite no bullshit here and there. And then um, before that, I worked in music events, marketing and sales, which I transitioned into, which was the period where I was sleeping in my car. And before that, um, my life was a mess, to be honest. Like I've had a lot of success and a lot of people see me as like, okay, top 2% podcaster, earned six figures, like grinded my way more so to success than most people. Um, but like, there's a lot of hardship there. And uh, yeah, like throw in a suicidal ideation and depression from six to 24 years old. And um, I was really lost in life. Like I think a lot of people are like, I, I didn't know what to do. Society was telling me to do one thing and I followed that and then didn't end up working out and, and I really had no strife. I had no goals. I remember being 24 years old in an apartment with a girlfriend that we'd had a toxic relationship up to that point and both t took two to tango. Like I, I, I was not a, uh, a healthy person to be in a relationship with either. And um, yeah, it was, I was a total mess. And I, I just remember after having like yet another anxiety attack after yet another five hours of sleep all week and then getting paralytically drunk at, at the weekend, I was like, what are you doing with your life right now? Like, where, where are you? Like, who are you? And then um, on the day of the breakup, that was when it really transpired. And I think I used that energy of the breakup to just shift shift hard and shift through so that's uh that's i guess a little bit of the backstory but there's so much more and feel free to dive into it but um i'm excited for this so thank you to all the listeners for listening to me up to this point and um i'm sure i'll, I'll, I'll do with my best intentions to give you some juice as, as james will as well absolutely man and it's it's funny how that works too because like it's a it's a breakup it's the gym it's always something that a lot of people i think are on that same path. They start with something that, that negative happened to them and then it propels them into, you know, stepping into that best version of themselves. I, I know that there was a lot of, like you said, it was a lot of hard work that got you to where you are today. There was no shortcut, which a lot of mm -hmm. people are looking for. I'm curious, what do you think are the less obvious reasons that you've, you've been able to create the success that you have? Wow, James, what a question. What are the less obvious reasons that I've been able to create success that I have? You know what? I was actually writing an Instagram post on this um, today. Yeah. And it was kind of, it was kind of, I was still figuring out the title, but it was along the, along the road of like the indirect, indirect actions that have got me the success that I've wanted to have it's crazy. and have had. And the indirect actions have been very simply transitioning from five hours of sleep a night to actually having a sleep pattern. Like, oh my God, who knew that when you sleep properly, you feel better. Who knew? But not me who was who like had gone through university getting drunk every single night two three hours of sleep going to university repeat rinse and repeat and then that was huge like honestly like once i got my sleep on lock and i just uh i just got some new sleep supplements actually and a lot of the time you'll see you know the hormozy no strips oh yeah he, had, he actually copied he actually copied that from me so um he, he messaged me on instagram was like luke i love those no strips to you. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I absolutely rinse the no strips. Um, sleep supplements like magnesium, GABA, um, 5-HTP, just to lock in some sleep. So that's actually a really less obvious reason why I've had success. Um, I think another less obvious reason that I've had success was seeing the, the fucking struggle of my mum 
working like grinding mm. and so my mum's a she's a hair salon uh, owner um but very much the breadwinner of the family and like not being able to spend time with my mum because she was like doing all the financial admin and all the like we would go like if we went to the beach at the weekends we would have to be back by a certain time because she had to get her laundry ready for ready for the work on Monday. And like, yeah, like I still got to go to the beach, which was cool. Like, I love that. But it was always like, we have to be somewhere. We have to do this. We have to do this. And it was always like, mum's working in her office. Like, and it was like, mum works five days a week, but it's really seven days a week. So that seeing that was a, a driver for my success, but it's also a paradigm that I fell into of working hundreds of hours every single, every single week for months. Yeah. Um, and I didn't actually earn more in my business until I actually stepped those hours down. So that's a less obvious reason I earned more. So, uh, the past year gone, I don't really like to talk about figures cause it, it blows up the, the part of myself that I don't like. But, um, when I had my second biggest month in October, I was only working two to three hours a day. Um, and that really, really forced me to do high priority tasks, like really forced me to do high priority tasks and not fill my time with just pitiful shit that doesn't matter, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, I would say those are some really great drivers. I appreciate the question, James. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the answer, man. I know, I know. And I'm excited. Like I said, I'm, I'm excited to hop into everything here because you're, you're someone, like I said, when we first, we both, to give people context, we both joined the same coaching program to essentially really hone in on our business and, and build our coaching skills. Seeing you in that going from, you know, being one of the, the leaders of the, of the entire program, it was, it was really exciting to see your journey because it, it really encapsulates what I'm trying to do with this podcast really at the end of the day. And you not even thinking of it, it's just you being who you are doing what you're doing and trying to make the impact that you're trying to make in the same process. You're inspiring others to do the exact same thing. And, mm -hmm. and, and especially going from, you know, working so much to prioritizing the things that w make you work less. I'm curious what beliefs you had to let go of in order to be able to do that. Because I know, especially as an entrepreneur, it's something that is very difficult to let go of. Yeah. It's, um, that belief is, is one of the hardest that I've, I've had to overcome because it, it tackled with my paradigm of feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And if you look at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, being safe is one of those like first pillars. So yeah. like, if you don't have safety, you're not going to prioritize anything else. So I'm there tackling with my paradigm that made me feel unsafe, which was cutting my work hours. I, and I learned this just literally today, um, is that's a trauma drive. So aspect you are working because of trauma and you feel like if you stop, then that makes you less worthy. It makes yep. you not feel enough. It makes you, um, not feel safe like, like I did. And I was, I was genuinely at that time getting pain in my uh, sacral and heart chakra, like every single day. Yeah. It felt so weird. And at that time I was only sleeping like three, four hours a night. Cause I decided to go in a, uh, hostel because I hadn't had a hostel experience. So I was like, Oh, I'm going to try a hostel. I haven't done that before. And after one day I was like, oh, fucking, I'm not going <laughs> to a hostel ever again. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sleeping much. Um, which was really rare. Cause at this time, like I'd actually nailed my sleep routine, just, don't put yourself in a room full of 42 people without your headphones. Um, but <laughs> the sacral, the sacral, it was a lot of paradigm shifting, but the only way that I rewired it at that time was by just saying like, just keep moving forwards, just keep moving forwards. And that's the same keep moving forwards that had me get off of a bridge when I was like about to jump when I was 19, 20 years old. And it's the same thing that, has moved me forwards when I pulled out three credit cards and I was 10 K in debt and I didn't have a flight back to the UK from us. Cause I didn't have the money. So I was like, just keep moving forwards, just keep moving forwards. And it's, that's been something that follows throughout my whole journey. So it's less so been unlearning the belief and like, cause I wasn't fully conscious of what that belief was bar the safety aspect of it, but it right. was more move forward and rewire it by action and result. Definitely. Definitely. And I'm, I'm excited that you brought that up too, because Cabo was something I wanted to get into a bit of dude, like 
I know that you, you say that you're moving more towards like the mindset and the business aspect of things, but the confidence at the end of the day, as we know, it's, it's, it's everything really like, you're not going to take any yeah. action if you don't, if you don't have that belief for you to be able to go when you're using credit cards to, to go to Cabo and yeah. to do that, what, <laughs> what drove you to go there? And then how did you not only just believe in yourself and the ability to, to create what you were able to create after the fact, but to actually go there knowing in the position that you were in, because it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So Dean DeVries is the reason why I went, um, who was my mentor at the time alongside his business partner, who most people know is Rob Dial, the mindset mentor. Yep. Um, and I knew I was going to see a lot of people that I'd, I'd grown in this program with, and I really wanted to go, but like it was one of my worst months in business. I just transitioned to confidence and mindset from fitness and mindset. And people were like, oh, that's kind of similar. But I was starting at square one because I really didn't know what I was doing with that. So I was starting at square one. I had two clients default and I was like, well, I've already committed $1,500 non-refundable to this event. So I'm committed, I'm going. And I like to look at this with your, com with your confidence. Oftentimes people are like, oh, how do you find confidence in uncertainty? And that's hard, but I look at it as a reflection piece. So I look at it as like one, I know confidently that if I don't go and if I stay the same, I confidently know that that's going to stunt my growth. And I know what the stunting of my growth looks like more mental health challenges, um, struggle with self image, external validation, et cetera, et cetera. If I do go, I confidently know that growth is going to come out of that, even though it's uncertain. So that's the way that I like to look at it is like confidently I'll go and do something that's vastly uncomfortable because I know it will grow me, even though it's uncomfortable. Um, and I appreciate I've I kind of dived around the question a little bit, but bringing it back to how do I have essentially the confidence to step in and do something like that? Right. I just do things, dude. Like I, I do things and I'm very impulsive and that's bitten me in the ass sometimes, particularly in relationships in my past, yeah. but, um, in business, it's kind of like, well, I'm in now, so figure it out. And I'm great. I'm fantastic when I put my back against the wall. And, uh, like for example, for my first six figures in business, I reinvested nearly every single penny back into it. And I was still back up against the wall, even as I closed that first six figure mark. And I was like, okay, cool. This is the way you want to run it. Then this is the way you're going to run it. Like I don't do that now, but it served me for my first year, I would say. Yeah. You have, you have something that uh, I think Alex Ramosi does talk a lot about. You guys have a lot of the same characteristics. I don't know if you've uh, taken into account. I think there's a video that he made and it's like the three most important things to people that are successful. They have in terribly insecure, they have yeah. a confidence, uh, a complex. And then I think it's, there's something else that's there, the but last you have, one is, uh, impulse control. Yes. Yes, exactly. And as you just said, you're, you're impulsive about things, but mm -hmm. you have a bias towards action. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the purpose that I think a lot of people miss out on is we, we think so much, we take so much in and we, and I did this too. Like when I joined the program and I was 17, it was like, that was me putting my back against the wall as well. I was, I was okay. terrified getting into that thing and then going to Austin to do the same kind of um, thing, it really had a big impact. But I think that there's a part that a lot of people miss out on is that you had to change your money mindset. And I think that's something you something to talk a lot mm -hmm. about. What do you think contributed to you being able to change the way you you view money, you make money and, and the way that you really think about it in the world? Yeah. And it's a great question because for me, I had to put myself in debt in order to step forward into coaching. Like I was on universal credit, which is the UK efficient of benefits when I was, or like, I think you yeah. guys call it welfare. So I was on that when I started yeah. my coaching business and that's a money mindset challenge itself to step away from something that you feel is supporting you to step away from that. Again, coming back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and safety. But I think it's amazing to see where my money mindset was at. So that first 10 K month is like, is the glorified coaching like, Oh, I've, I've hit the 10 K month spent it first month spent it. Like I got it. I was like, boom, I got this. I done it. I spent the entire thing. <laughs> like it was gone. Um, and I was like, Oh wow. Like, where has this gone? And I had to slowly start taking control of my money mindset and people were like, Oh, okay, cool. I've done some mindset work. Like 
I'm done. And it's, it's not like that at all. Like every level that you step into like six figure, seven mark, eight figure, nine, nine figure mark. I remember being in the elite container with Rob Dahl and him saying like every money, every part in business that I thought was the next stepping stone. It wasn't the next system. It wasn't the next hire. It was the next money mindset ob obstacle that I had to overcome. Yeah. So that first started with, okay, what are my ingoings and outgoings? This is the basics to business, right? What are my ingoings and outgoings? But so many people avoid looking at their bank account because that's a source of pain. And when your bank account is a source of pain, you know that you fucked it for a few years. So you've got to first overcome that. And I started doing that by actually looking at it every single day. I was like, this is what you've got. And then the next thing was looking at how much debt do you have right now? And at one point it was 18 K if you included the payment plan that I was on with another one-to-one -one coach that I was committed to finishing. And I'm not somebody that will ever back out on a payment plan. Like that's so out of integrity. And if Ooh. I did that, like if all of my clients did that, because I did that once, I'd be like, okay, cool. Like, obviously that's going to happen. Right. But being 18 K in debt with, on a crazy payment plan, I had to start really tracking my finances effectively. So I just got like mint money, money pot. And then any money that was coming in, I started allocating that to pots. So I was like, okay, 40% is going to stay in the business. 30% is going to paying off the credit cards. 20% is actually going into savings. So that might, people might be like, oh, isn't that a bit backwards? Cause you're, you still got credit card debt and you've still got savings. Yeah. Well, guess what? There's six, seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs out there who are in debt. So you're always going to like, like you can use the bank's money for you to step forward. Like you don't have to use your own money. If anything, it's probably a safer option. So I do it that way. That way I'm effectively playing off paying off my credit cards, but I'm also building up a somewhat safety blanket so that if my legs got broken or if whatever happened and I couldn't go out and about and I appreciate I'm an online entrepreneur. So <laughs> Amen. There's, there's a lot you can do. Amen. Um, my business is good for six months, running all the staff, running all the costs. And I think that's a big part of it. But another thing with the money mindset is like, if we strip it down to money mindset basics, one, identify what that belief is. Like, is that money's evil? Is that, is that money doesn't grow on trees? Which I love that answer to it is like, money doesn't grow on trees unless you plant the seed, right? So passive income, baby, let's go. Um, but identify that belief, then you're gonna understand the story, right? Where, where was that created? But I think this is what uh, an integral part that everyone misses is yeah, understand where that belief is, but understand your feelings as a child around that understand your experiences what thoughts did that create as a child and then you almost like sometimes i like to do this on a deeper level with my clients is write a love letter to that child who was hurt like assure them that they are we're bringing back in the safety as aspect of this that they're safe that they're okay that it's okay to think differently it's okay to question the way that other people think you know something that i had to i had to reframe was the aspect of I, when I was at college I had an economics teacher, which is so ironic, right? She's teaching me about money, but she's got no idea how to do her money mindset. And she was moaning how every single day she had the drive to drive to college. And it was like all this expenses and it was all this. And me being like the person who questions everything, I was like, why don't you just move closer if it's like <laughs> such a hassle? I was like 30% yeah. attendance for that class. I was not. The <laughs> <laughs> she hated me. First, first, first class, she pulled me up in front of class and was like, if you act like this, you'll never be successful in life. So <laughs> yeah, thanks Liz. Um, but I had to forgive her for that. I had to forgive like people. Forgiveness was a huge part. I went yeah. through a stage where I wrote down something like, is it 52 people that had wronged me in my past that was holding anger and resentment towards? And I reached out to them all on every single day or not every single day, all within the space of about two, three hours, just saying like, Hey, I held this resentment against you for X, Y, Z. It's kind of sounds petty now, but just want to let you know, like whatever comes from this, like I want to move forwards from this. And that was hard. Like I had to reach out to first, like the guy that bullied the most, bullied me the most at college, mm -hmm. like made me feel like fucking shit. And, um, he was the first person I reached out to and he was actually cool. And then there was a couple of people that got a little testy, but like that's, that's on them. Right. So forgiveness is huge within your money mindset. I, I really would say is huge. And then just stepping forward with, uh, another great thing that you can do 
is every single spend that you do. So I have, I have two things right now for you guys. So first thing I have a rewards list. So I only spend money if I've earned it. Mm -hmm. So if I get a new client or if I get a client investment, or if I get a return on a passive income source, if that comes forward, then I have a rewards list. And that starts with like things like goes from like a steak because I love steak. Me too. Yep. <laughs> All the way up to at the moment, I think the highest value item on there at the moment is like a three month trip to Bali. Hell so, yeah. um, there's a rewards list for, for different things. Right. Um, so that is the way that I'm like, I actually feel blessed for spending then. And I don't spend above my means. Like I did when I did that five figure month and then spent it all. And the right. second thing is if there is a spending and if you feel a certain way towards that, right on those receipts that you get, this money comes back to me seven times. Magic. You're good. So I appreciate, um, I can talk a, a lot around in circles. I, I guess it's my personality, but yeah, that's uh, me and money mindset at least. Yeah, I love it. And I want to ask like one on one more thing on the money mindset is yeah, I know that you've, you've done a lot of as people can already tell from the way that you're speaking on this podcast, you've done a lot of work in, in, in books and in, in investing into yourself and, in just your personal growth, right? What three books have had the biggest impact on whether it's you or your money mindset or just your overall in, in general? Mm. Money mindset. I would say you're a badass, but at making money, Jen Sincero, I read Robert. it like five, six times now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And the, the first time I read it was the first time I had that five figure cash month. Second yeah. time I, I read it was when I had consistent cash months, uh, 10K cash months. Third time I read it was when I had a 36K month. So like there's a, there's a bit of a commonality <laughs> <Something> there. there. <laughs> <laughs> there's something telling you that, but it's True. not, it's not the aspect of reading. It's the aspect of doing the journaling questions, the actual reworking yourself. You can go through a book, which gives you the best tools in the world. You can go through the best coaching program in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, it means fuck all. So I'm a big fan of books that give me actions to do. You are about us at making money. Second one, um, and I'm actually currently reading it, but it's one of the most information packed books I've ever read. Um, and in such a short term, um, like it's a 400 page book, but it's, there's so much information. And then there's journaling questions on the website as well, which is yeah. such a win for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's called the personal MBA by Josh Kaufman, Kaufman. Great yeah. book. Um, there's a finance, a finance aspect of that that will help you make more, smart decisions within business. Mm -hmm. Um, third one, um, third one is actually a spirituality book called, um, conversations with God. I was mm. recommended it by Natalie Spaeth, who was another member of that coaching program. Um, I'm ha I got halfway through the second book. I was lost to be honest. It was like, it was, it was too much spirituality for me. I was so lost, but that was really good because it gave me a sense of being and a sense of being the person who could have the money that he wanted to have, not just doing the actions and hoping that he was going to get it. It wasn't like a, Hey, you do this and you get this result. It's no, no, you are somebody who deserves that result is worthy of that result. That was huge. And then I think as a side note, a book called letting go, that's going to incorporate a lot of aspects of your life by David Hawkins. Yeah, that's an incredible book around surrender. And notice how those last two um, more lean into the feminine energy of flow and surrender. Those first two books are more masculine energy and more doing, I would say. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing those because those are all, I need to read Jen Sincero. One of my favorite books is You Are a Badass, the regular book. And then I've, I've been putting off and I have three credits for audible. So I'm getting uh, those are three right there. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like, <laughs> lean them in, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to get audible this month as well. Cause I'm a pretty prolific reader as well. And I think it's, it's, it's game changing. It's game changing. It's, it's, it's definitely game changing. And you, you can do in on YouTube, you can only go to two X speed on audible. You can go past two X speed. And I know how you are. I know how I am. It, we're going to go past two X speed if we can. Um, yeah. Just to Tom Bill, you, yeah, Tom Bill, you recommends doing that in one of his podcasts. Like that's the, the quickest way to learn. And Josh Kaufman was saying that a great way for you to read books faster, which was learned from another book that he'd read. He's clearly a prolific reader as well. Right. Um, is like, look at a book for the information that you actually want to learn from it, that you actually want to take from it yeah. and think, okay, I want to learn. Let's say you pick up 
12 rules for life by Jordan Peterson, and you want to learn how to, how to learn discipline structure and what it takes to become a man. And those are the three things that you highlight. Then you look at the chapter titles and you go, okay, cool. And then you flick through and because of your reticular activating system, you find the information that you need, boom, yep. you move forward. Yep. I love it. I love it. I love that you bring up the reticular. You know how I am, I, man. I, we could talk about this all day. I love talking about the brain. I love talking about all this. And, and as you were, the reason I wanted to get into the, the money mindset kind of aspect of things is because you've healed through a lot of trauma in your life and you've been through a whole lot that a lot of people, I don't want to say that they can't, um, they can't really agree with or not agree with, but really experience in their life, but right. be able to get from where you were to where you are today. It's such a massive gap. I'm curious what habits or, or uh, things that you really integrated in your life that allowed you to really close that gap and, and take small steps every day. Yeah. Um, a big one for me when I manifested that big month for me was uh, incorporating an affirmation walk. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to double down on walking and doing affirmations at the same time. So I literally have an affirmation book, which was called uh, 52 Weeks to Unleash Your The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murray. Really, it's a book about there's just 52 weeks and it, you get a set of affirmations for each week. And then like he kind of pitches his services and his testimonials at the end there's a vast amount like i'm like cool dude do your thing um but i would say um incorporating an affirmation walk in my mornings was huge mm -hmm. um it's something that i still do and if you're looking at it from a, a brain side of things when you do an affirmation it activates the same part of your brain that it would do if you were eating a really nice meal so if you're having a really nice meal, you're having that steak that we talked about earlier, oh baby, you're getting me hungry. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> like, sorry guys, I'm so sorry. Um, if you're having that steak and you're like, mm, so good, it's melting in my mouth. I can feel the buttery texture. Oh my God, I'm getting so hungry. Um, <laughs> and then, but it's, it's gonna activate that same good feelings. Yep. So affirmations when you can land them in, I like that, but they also work from a, a repetitive standpoint and you do reach a block you will reach a block with it and this is where you've got to really affirm in the right way because you can create a dopamine situation for yourself where you think you've achieved something when you actually haven't and the problem is with that let's say you're like hey i want to hit 500k in revenue this year if you start telling everybody that you're going to hit 500k in revenue you'll get the dopamine reward from it before yep. actually getting it and then you don't have the chase and you don't have the movement towards and how many people do we know in the startup community that are like hey i'm gonna do this big thing i'm gonna do this thing and then they don't because they've just spent all their time telling everybody now that's an aspect of also accountability but if you said i'm working towards doing this that's different you said i'm gonna do that I don't know. There's, there's a, there's a challenge there, but affirmations are big. Um, second thing was actually shortcutting my morning routine. Um, so my morning routine used to be really long. Um, used to be yoga, used to be stretching. Da, 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 da. When I was traveling, I was like, I don't have fucking time for this. Um, so I'm just going to do what's going to work best for me. And so I would wake up, I would subconscious journal. So I would just journal the first things that come out of my mind. And when you first do this, you'll realize how nasty your subconscious is. So it might be random, like scribbles that some of it I couldn't even understand. Like the first couple of days, it was like elephants are smarter than humans. I was like, what are you dreaming about? But the next time that I did it, it was like, you're a loser. You suck. It was like, you're never going to do anything. And I was like, wow. And this has been going on for eight hours. Like while I'm sleeping, I'm like, nah, we got to change some yeah. things. And if your subconscious says in the morning too many times, I'm tired, you've got a situation there. You've got to fix your sleep. So it's a really good exercise that you literally pull your journal out or you have your journal next to you in bed, you wake up and you read and you do that. Next thing I did was like a little seven minute, um, coaching mindset specific affirmation thread that I'm, I'm actually going to create my own one, um, for my clients, I think within this next program that we're doing. Um, but a little short seven minute thing, cold shower, like just, oh, it's beautiful. I love a cold shower. I don't love a cold shower, but I do love a cold shower. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, it just makes me feel great. And then the next thing was affirmation walk. And then I have this incredible daily checklist. And, uh, if it's okay, I can say this, James. Definitely. Um, it's in the bio. Yeah, like, right? yeah. So like, if you go to my Instagram bio, go to links, I've got a 
it's like coachforluke.com daily slash productivity slash template. It's going to be easier if you find it in my bio, but I use that template every single day. And I add, I have added different questions within it. And it, it really promotes mindful productivity because to me, productivity means doing as much as you can possibly do in the least amount of time with the least amount of effort. And I speak to people and I'm like, Hey, would you like this productivity template? And they're like, Oh, I'm too busy. And I'm like, Oh, really? Cause that's why you need it. Um, but anyhow, daily productivity template, um, is gold. It, it incorporates everything from what's in my calendar for the next few days, all the way up to like, what are the most important tasks that I have to move on today? And it gives me an aspect to have like a little five to 10 minute, 10 minute stint. And then I'm full send on those most important activities. Um, so those were hugely, hugely, hugely helpful. And I think having someone to support you is big, whether that be friends, whether that be a partner, but having somebody that, you know, is going to be a bit of a ride or die, even if that temporary is feeling mm -hmm. that that fit like at least for me as somebody in human design and I'm not a human design expert, but generator, like I have a, a somewhat a need for, for support, for, for growth. So if I feel that, yeah, I can lone wolf it, but to have that support system's huge, which is why we say hang around with those five people. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Those are the things that I would say have been the most impactful for me. And then just general stuff, which is just like meal prepping for time and then, uh, looking after my health. Yeah. 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 I'm you just gave us so much value right there, man. I'm so, I'm so appreciative for all that. And your, your, your links will be all in the, in the, um, show notes. So there's no worries about that. I think it's that, and I have something like that as well. I give my clients is like, we, we can be a lot more effective when we have an intention when, before we start our day. Like, mm -hmm. you're like it's the, it's the starting the night before, but I'm, I'm, I'm also happy that you brought up the, the aspect of the, the mental masturbation kind of perspective on things, right? When we mm -hmm. tell everybody our goals, but then we don't really take the action to do it. And Jen right. Sarah actually talks about it in her book too. It's like when you say you meditate on something and you can meditate on the feeling of passing, say you're running a marathon, you can meditate on the feeling of passing the finish line. And that is not really the most effective way because it's kind of like that. Or you can meditate on the feeling of your shins are bleeding on the 13th mile and you're still going. And that's what you want to really enter energetically experience because then you're, you're pushing through the times where you don't really think that you're going to make it through. I'm curious mm -hmm. for you in, in all of the deep work and shadow work that you've done, I'm curious what the longest, what lesson took you the longest to learn? Get the fuck off my phone. <laughs> that's honestly been the longest one but it has some it has some depths to it so um i used to get in a lot of trouble when i was a kid because i would want to spend time with my parents but my parents were always watching tv and they would tell me to go to bed and so i would go upstairs and then as soon as i got a tv in my room i would watch tv i watch tv until like I, until like 11 12 pm um led to an incident with videotape being thrown at my head at one point um <laughs> And, um, yeah, just, I think that has honestly been the longest, longest standpoint. Phones are now like getting more and more addictive anyhow. So in, when I was with my girlfriend at the, my girlfriend at the time, that, that relationship, it was, I was on my phone and I was always like searching externally for something that I wasn't getting internally. Mm -hmm. So actually getting off my phone was the most challenging thing because I was always given a reason be like, Oh, that's the reason why I was doing it. Oh, that's the reason why I did it last night. And I'm actually, when you look at it from like a, a mentor of mine, Simon Parsons, great guy, Love left Simon. hand, he gave me a left hand, right hand analogy. So if you guys are listening to this, what I want you to do, or just do this figuratively, if you're driving, <laughs> <laughs> um, hold up your left hand, and your right hand. And from there, I want you to look at your left hand and you're going to hold up the fists. They're going to be fists, hands closed, look in the left hand. And when you look in the left hand, what's in it, you're going to say nothing. And I'd be like, right. Okay. And now open up your right hand, but stay looking at your left hand and you go, what's in it. And you go nothing, but could you know for sure that nothing is in it? Like figuratively, like theoretically, even though you don't know what's in it, could you for sure certainly know what's in it? And there's an answer. There's like a slim slither of hope that you don't fully know what's in it. Mm -hmm. And the point is being when we focus on the left hand, when we focus on our past, we often just justify all of the bullshit reasons why we stay there. 
So, oh, that's the reason why I'm staying on my phone. Oh, that's the reason why I'm a victim to my circumstances. That's the reason why I'm not fucking good enough. That's the reason why I'm broke. That's the reason why I'm not motivated. That's the reason why I'm depressed. That's the reason why I have anxiety issues. But when you look at the future, which is the right hand, that's where you want to look. Look with who you want to become. Look with who you want to be. And when you look at that right hand, that's the energy where you want to move to. Sure, that left is going to come up here and there, and it's great for a little bit of shadow work to take reflection on it. But don't stay stuck in your shadow. Look to who you want to become and the actions, habits, mindset, identity that are in congruency with that, and do your absolute best to be in constant alignment with that. That's the way that I would look at it. I love it. I love it, man. I had Simon on the podcast, and something when I met him in um, Austin, when I went to the... the um, the in Whatever. person BB. Yeah, in person BB event. I uh, couldn't think. Um, when we went there, there was something that he taught me, and or he kind of brought a perspective into me. I don't know what it is with him hand, with him in hand gestures, but it was essentially a hands gesture. And it was about the money mindset because I think a lot of us have this this hurdle of investing in ourselves. And I'm, I think after mm-hmm. this podcast, a lot of people are going to have a different perspective on it with everything that you've shared today from, from your story. And it was that if you're holding on to everything that you have, all the money that you have, and your fist is closed, you're not open to receiving anything. So how is money going to come to you if you're, if you're closing everything off? And you may mm. let the money go, you may be, but you're actually open to money is when you open your hand. And I think that mm. is exactly as you said there, it's like you have to, it's what you focus on is that's going to really have that big impact um, on you. So I think that there's a question that I ask last on every podcast. It's like my favorite question. And I'm going to ask it, what beliefs are you currently unlearning? Hmm. What beliefs am I currently unlearning? I'm still in the process of unlearning that I can find someone who's in energetic alignment to me from a relationship standpoint. I find I move quite fast for people. So sometimes it's I like to see that as like a reason for not being in a relationship. And I've had so many platonic friendships and I've slept with more people than most. And I gained myself a real reputation for that. But it's something that I'm unlearning. And Jordan Peterson said, like, sure, if you want to have casual sex with people, then cool, do that. But be prepared to be treated like a casual partner. And it really hit me in the soul when he said that. So that's a belief that I'm, I'm currently unlearning. I would say it's not business related. It's not, yeah, it's mindset related, but is, is having that energetic alignment to be in congruency with somebody that is going to be in alignment with me and aligned with what I'm building. Right. I think that's the thing. Like I can find a lot of people that are in the entrepreneurial space or whatever it is, but like, not that I like to romanticize it because I don't know the exact ins and outs of everybody's relationship, but like, that Layla Hormozy ride, ride or die. Like that's, that's the, that's the goal chief. Um, so yeah, but at the same time, like I'm not attached to it. I'm attached to me becoming the best version of myself. And to quote Alex on that, I don't do my best. I do what's required. So I'm going to build me and whether that attracts the right person, it attracts the right person. But in the meantime, I'm going to build me. So yeah, I'd say that's the belief I'm unlearning. I love that, man. I love that. And most of the time, the beliefs that we're unlearning really do come down to ourselves at the end of the day. It's about what, what we think is possible in business, in life. And that Alex Hormozzi, it's not going to say once in a lifetime kind of thing, but they weren't even on a date, man. They got together. So it's, it, yeah, it, but... it, is, it is definitely crazy. But I'm, I'm in the same position in the sense that I think right now we all go through seasons of our life. And this season of your life just might be all in on building the best version of you. And that might encapsulate what your business is going to is going to become in the process of that and and through that i mean i think that everything's going to as we know everything happens exactly as it's supposed to so i, I don't think there's anything to worry about man you're a great person and i think that Very it's going to happen exactly when it's supposed to man so for for those that would like to follow along with you your podcast everything that you're going on where can they find you luke yeah so best place is instagram i am luke anning l-u-k-e-a-n-n-i-n-g 
Uh, I've got a podcast called The Happy Positive Energy Game. Um, James will be coming on it, so bring yourselves over. Um, we've got about three episodes out a week. And then James, is it okay if I if I low-key pitch something? Go ahead. So I've got a Grow Your Badass Business coaching program coming out at the moment. Really our unique selling point is that um, you'll get one-to-one -one accountability unlike other group programs and courses where you're kind of thrown in at the deep end and then it's like, hey, how come you're, you're not there. succeeding? It's like, no, like you'll get that support directly from me. Um, and then we also have a 9K giveaway as well to every founding member of that group program. So we only have 20 spots. It's a really intimate container. But you also get aspects to win a four-month mindset, business, marketing, bit of speciality from me as well, which is a wonderful opportunity that I likely won't ever do again. So all you've got to do is DM me 9K and we'll get you set up. And if you want to get set up with the program, DM me Grow. But um, honestly, James, it's been an honor. And for everybody listening, I appreciate you listening to me blabber on and uh, give you some wisdom. So <laughs> appreciate you all. Man, I'm, I'm so grateful to have you on the show. And I, I assume that we're, we're going to be really closely related in, in years to come. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have you on the podcast in, in the future, man. I'm, I'm grateful, yes, grateful to have you on the show, man. And we're signing off.